recall that whenever I give you a covering space P sends Y to X and a point little y in P inverse of X for some base point little x in X I get a subgroup P star pi 1 Y based at Y inside pi 1 X base at X and the question I want to answer now is which subgroups can I get this way? The answer is going to be as long as I can get the trivial subgroup I can get any subgroup. More precisely we're going to prove that if X is a path connected locally path connected space and assume that there is a simply connected universal cover in other words a, a covering space x tilde of x which is simply connected so under those assumptions we're going to prove that for any subgroup h in the fundamental group of x there's a covering space p maps y to x and a, a base point little y in p inverse of little x such that p star pi 1 y at y is h So here's how we're going to prove it. There are several steps. First thing we need to do is to observe that the deck group of x tilde u is, if we remember from an earlier video on the deck group, it's equal to pi 1 of x. Now the deck group acts on x tilde. And what we need to do first is to prove that this action is properly discontinuous. So the first thing we're going to do is prove the deck group action of pi 1x on x tilde is properly discontinuous. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the quotient of x tilde not by the whole deck group, because that would give us x, but by a subgroup, namely the subgroup h. This will give us a space Y, which is going to be our covering space. And importantly, because this group action is properly discontinuous, this quotient, X tilde over H, has fundamental group H. So lastly, what we need to do is to prove that the projection map from y to x is a covering map. So what is this projection map? Well, remember y consists of orbits of h acting on x tilde. So if I pick a point y in x tilde, it has an equivalence class under the action of H and that now lives in Y but moreover it has an equivalence class under the action of pi 1 X of the whole deck group acting on X tilde so we also get a point which I'll call maybe brackets Y subscript X inside X And the map P is just the thing that sends the equivalence class of Y under the H action to the equivalence class of Y under the X action, pi 1X action. All right, so all this is doing is, this is saying we remember the H orbit of the point Y in the universal cover, and this is saying we remember the entire pi 1X orbit of the point Y in the universal cover. So it's like a forgetful map. Once we've proved these various things, it'll become clear that we've got a covering space whose fundamental group is H, and therefore it's push forward P star pi 1 Y 
is a subgroup of x which is isomorphic to h. And you might like to think about why the subgroup we get is precisely the subgroup h that we started with. And, you know, if you go back to where we were talking about properly discontinuous group actions and proving, for example, that the fundamental group of a quotient by a properly discontinuous group action was the subgroup that we quotient by if, if the total space was simply connected. I think if you look back at that proof, it'll become clear why we get precisely the subgroup that we started with, and not just some other subgroup that happens to be isomorphic to it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to prove, one, that the debt group is properly discontinuous. That will imply two immediately. So we then need to prove three, that this forgetful map is a covering map. So first we need to prove that the debt group, actually of any cover, acts properly discontinuously. So let's um, <clears throat> take a space X and a covering space Y. In, in our case, this is actually going to be the universal cover, but the proof works more generally. Um, and let's draw a couple of the uh, branches of, of the covering space Y. Here's the covering map P. And I want to take a point little y in y projecting down to a point little x in x. The deck group acts on y at the space y. And what I need to do to prove it acts properly discontinuously is to find an open neighborhood of little y such that when I apply any deck transformation, it gets taken to a disjoint neighborhood. So let's pick a neighborhood. I'm going to start by picking a neighborhood of x down in the space x, which I'm going to call u. So this is an elementary neighborhood. Of x. And that means that its pre image under P consists of various pieces path connected pieces. And remember on each for each of these path connected pieces we have a local inverse from U to that corresponding piece. So let's call the one that contains y, v. And I claim this is going to be the open set we can use to prove proper discontinuity of the action near y. So how do we do that? Let's take a deck transformation, g. And see how it acts. Well, suppose g is not the identity. I want to show that sort of G acting on V, and remember I write my actions on the right hand side. So if I do VG, that is G acting on V, I want to show that its intersection with V is the empty set. Well, first of all, because G is a covering transformation, this set VG has to be another one of these path components, maybe maybe this one, living over U. I mean, it could be the same one a priori, but it has to be a path component of P inverse U. And if it's not the path component that contains Y, then clearly it's disjoint from the set V, because V is the path component containing Y, and if those two intersected, then they would form a path-connected union. So either this is the empty set, or VG equals V. These are the only possibilities. If it's the empty set, we're done. If VG equals V, well, we know that G of Y has to be a pre-image of X. And in particular, it has to be the pre-image that lies inside VG. 
which we're now assuming is y. Right, because we're, we're saying vg equals v, so the unique preimage of x living in that set is, is y. But if yg equals y, then by the theorem on covering transformations that we proved earlier, the uniqueness theorem, this tells us that g has to be the identity. And that contradicts our assumption earlier on that it wasn't the identity. So we get a contradiction. In other words, VG intersect V is the empty set. So the main point we used here was that if we have a covering transformation that fixes a point, it's the identity. So this proves the deck group acts properly discontinuously, actually for any covering space, but in particular for the universal cover X tilde. So here's the other statement we needed to finish the proof of the theorem. And I've stated it in slightly more generality than I did earlier. So to translate between what I said there and what I've said here, Z is supposed to be the universal cover X tilde, and G is supposed to be pi 1 of X. So suppose that G acts properly discontinuously on Z, and that H is a subgroup of G. Then the quotient map P that goes from Z mod H to Z mod G is a covering map. And again, just to translate between earlier and now, Z mod H is what we were calling Y, and Z mod G is the original space X. So first of all, let me write um, Z H, subscript H, that is, for the element Z considered as an element of the quotient Z mod H. And moreover, let me write Z G as the element Z considered in the quotient Z mod G. So this quotient map is P of Z H equals Z G. So I claim this map P is a well-defined continuous map. So let's check. First, it's well-defined because if Z and Z prime represent the same equivalence class, with respect to h, then, well, what does that mean? It means there exists some h such that z equals z prime h. This h lives in h. But in particular, h lives in g because h is a subgroup of g. So that implies the equivalence class under g of z and of z prime are equal. So it's definitely a well-defined map. Now, there is a map from Z directly to Z mod G that just sends Z to its equivalence class in G. And this map is continuous by definition of the quotient topology on Z mod G. Moreover, there's a map from Z to Z mod H that just does exactly the same quotienting by the action of H. So the map P is the unique map we need to stick here from Z mod H to Z mod G to make this diagram commute. In other words, going from Z to Z mod G is the same as going from Z to Z mod H and then via P to Z mod G. Now when we studied the quotient topology we saw that the continuous maps from a quotient into some target space are exactly the continuous maps from the original space, in this case Z, before taking a quotient, to the target space that factor through the quotient. So in particular this tells us that P is a continuous map. Now we want to prove that the map P is a covering map from Z mod H to Z mod G 
And what we know is, because the group G acts properly discontinuously on Z, that the map Z goes to Z mod G is a covering map. In particular, there are elementary neighbourhoods in Z mod G and local inverses going from Z mod G to Z, let's call them Q. And the point is, if I want to construct a local inverse for P, all I need to do is go along Q and then down from Z to Z mod H. So that's how you construct the local inverses for the covering map P, which proves that P is a covering map. So this completes the proof of the theorem that says any subgroup arises as p star pi 1 y for a covering space y as long as you can get the trivial group from the universal cover to start with.